there and welcome to this computer science video that looks at the Visual Studio integrated development environment. In this video, we're gonna look at Visual Basic and creating a project and getting it up and running. So the first thing you need to have installed is Visual Studio 2019 or another version of Visual Studio. This is our integrated development environment that allows us to add code and create our projects. So in this window, I've got all of my previous projects on the left hand side there, or the most recent projects. I can open up a project or a solution, or I can open a local folder that contains my project, um, or I can even create a new project. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna create a new project today, and I'm gonna allow all of my languages to load. So make sure that you use this drop down box in order to allow you to select the Visual Basic programming language. From here, we're gonna create a Windows form application in the .NET framework. And that's a project for creating an application with a Windows form user interface. We click on it and then we just click next. Now this part is very important. I'm gonna create my first program inside this Visual Studio IDE. And I'm gonna make sure that it saves in the right place. So make sure that it gets put into somewhere that you know where that's gonna live. Hopefully that makes sense. So I'm just gonna store this on my desktop for now, but I would probably create a folder that's called programming, whether you're an AS or A2 computer science student, for example, you create the folder for that and store them all in the same place. And that just helps for housekeeping so you don't lose it. My solution name and project name are the same and don't worry about the framework. We can always change that later on, but it's set correctly by default. In the bottom right corner, we click create. And what you'll see is when it all loads, you'll see the form appear. And then we're gonna talk about the integrated development environment user interface. And there it is. So the Visual Studio interface has been used for many, many years and it's been adapted throughout the years, but it is fairly straightforward. I've got my front end that the user sees. On the left-hand side, I've got my toolbox, which contains all the objects that I'm gonna need for my project. On the right-hand side, I have my Solution Explorer and the main bits that are, that are important to me are the Form 1, if I double-click it, that's the front end, or the drop-down menu here, which is the back end, so that's the code window. I double-click it, and there's the code at the back of my form. Further down, if I click on any of the objects on my window here on my user interface, all of the properties are on the right hand side. Things like the background color can be changed from here and it allows an intuitive way for you to edit any of the properties inside the form. I can even change the name of the form, which is currently called form one, or I can even change the text properties, which is also form one. So if I change this and I type in my first program, you'll, you'll notice that on the form itself, form one changes to my first program. And if I was to start my program, you would see that when it appears, it doesn't actually do an awful lot and it's not very impressive. And there we go. The most pointless form in the world. However, we're gonna now add in a button object in order to allow us to do something with the code. So I've just double clicked in my toolbox there and it's produced a button to the screen. I can resize that to any size I want and I can also change the text of the button. So the two main properties that we're gonna need for our objects are the text property and the name property. Now, why are these two properties important? Because the text property allows you to change what the user sees. For example, I'll change that to submit. The user will then see that on the screen. If I change the name property, this is the name that I'm gonna use in the code to access the front of my project. So here I'm gonna put BTN which is what we call a good self-documenting identifier. And what that means is you are naming the object after what it is and what it does. So btn submit goes in there, and now that's set. 
if I come along and I think that's not, the text on there is not quite big enough for people to see, doesn't look very good, then all the properties, all the properties in here allow you to actually change it. So I've got three dots there on the font property and I can change it to as big or as small as I like. On the button, if I double click it, double click, it will produce the code event handler for the click event. Now, if you don't want a click event, there are lots of different uh, events that come with this property, this object. So here, this is the form drop down menu, which is my first program. That's the actual project itself. On here, these are all the objects on my form. I've only got one button at the moment, which is why that appears. And these are all the events that are open to that one object on my screen. So that button can do all of these events. So if I click one, it will produce the event handler for that. However, at this point, I don't need it. So top tip for all you AS students out there, as well as you A2 students, is never delete the public class and never delete the end class. That is your container for this project. These things here, these are sub procedures. And at the top, we've got private sub and end sub. Any code written inside those two relates to the btn submit event so when i click the button it's going to action whatever code appears here so if i put in there a simple output statement such as a message box i'm going to say you have clicked the button and there we are so that means when I click the button, it should action the code here, which means I'm going to output a message box. It's going to pop up and it's going to say, you have clicked the button. Now, when I go and run this, all I'll do is I'll bring it on the screen and I click the submit button. There you go. You have clicked the button. And that's as simple as this program actually gets here one line of code one object on the screen but it's getting us started on visual studio and if for whatever reason you think oh i can't access my toolbox anymore that's because you're in the programming window in order to access the toolbox you can only do that when you switch between the programming window to the design window if you accidentally lose any of these windows they are all available inside the view tab at the top of your project. So here they are. I've just lost my solution explorer, so there it comes back. I have also lost my toolbox, which is also there. I've also lost my properties window, which is a little bit further down. And you can get everything back. So don't worry if you lose anything like that. Just make sure that when you create your project, it actually works. So you'll see me throughout the series of these tutorials actually running my program at multiple points throughout my system, my system development, in order to prove that it actually works. Your form should have this little icon to prove that it is a front end form, and it'll have this little icon to show you that it's a correct back end of your system. Okay? And all you need to do is flick between and you'll get to your front end and your back end. And that's it for this video. Join me in the next ones where we take our journey through the Visual Basic .NET programming language and we get a little bit more advanced.